Okay. Well, I've been cowboy crazy ever since I was a little boy. My mother had a mother and grandmother had a lunchroom right near the Chicago stockyards, and um, the cowboys used to come in there and eat. And Will James goes back to that time of my life. Uh, I had all of the Will James books, uh, or many of the, the famous ones, and uh, 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 his drawings are still engraved in my mind. And I loved those drawings then. They were so alive to me. And I love them every bit as much now as I did then. The illustrations in the books that I had as a child are still tremendous companions to me, uh, whether they were Western or uh, about the Far East or uh, France or Italy or uh, the Lowlands. I had a wonderful set of children's books, but the ones that spoke cowboy to me were the Will James drawings. And now, at the age of 63, because today is my birthday, uh, they are more consciously a part of me because I can appreciate what it is that Will James had as an artist that made those drawings so alive to me as a child. He had an immediacy of execution. Now. Now. Do it. Do it. Done. Do it. Done. Do it. Done. Like that. Here's a cave painting done by one of our unnamed ancestors. This could come right out of a Will James drawing. The immediacy of that line, the freshness of that line, the absolute close link without any slack between the vision on the artist's inner screen and what the medium in his hand does on the wall. It's all one act. It's completely here and now, now, like that. Will James, in my book, is one of the finest draftsmen that ever lived in all of Western civilization. Why that's been overlooked, I don't know. He's been patronized by those who do know him as a children's illustrator. Well, he does those nice little things that my grandchildren like or my niece and nephew like. And nobody wants to understand, nobody wants to receive the greatness of that man's command of line and form and volume. You know, I want to point out a, um, look at this, look at this work right here. There's nothing, there's nothing to beat that, or there's some things to match it. But we have to go into all of Western art history. By Western art history, I mean back to the Tigris-Euphrates Valley. I'm not talking about the Red River Valley only. I'm not talking about the law or the draftsman west of the Pecos. I'm talking about starting from the Tigris-Euphrates um, drainage on west. And that's where you'd have to go. That is simply sublime. And I use words like that out of the establishment, the art history world establishment, you know, uh, because they're appropriate. What is it about that work right there that speaks to you about what it means? It is a horse and a rider being taken by this bull. The rider's loop is making a figure eight up here, his hat's in the air. We understand exactly what's happened, the curl in the old bull's tail, and uh, the pony's uh, off hind leg here and his front legs. 
but at the same time it is a sculpture it defines a sculptural form that Rodin himself or Michelangelo would be absolutely proud of conceiving. They've talked about how uh, Will James, people that have seen him, talk about how he just put his pen down there or his pencil or his charcoal. And he just placed it on the paper and then he just start to draw. He start to draw like that. Bring that on around like that. And there, when you're done, when he was done, the drawing would be captured inside of that line, inside that loop. Kind of like he was roping. It is not important whether an artist does it that way, or puts it down and erases, <coughs> or does it with a fuzzy series of um, kind of amorphic um, um, indications as to mass first, and then tightens it up and tightens it up and gets on down to the final line. That really isn't important, the technique that's used there. What is important in my view, my own experience, is that the artist have clear unquestioning contact with his vision and what it is that he's capturing there. I'm really left-handed here, so it's better if I do it that way. He sees that and then he just surrounds it. He just surrounds it. He, just, it, he starts to objectify it. It takes on outer form. And so whether he does it this way or he does it that way, there's a, a you know, a thousand ways to skin a cat. But first you've got to have a cat. And you can't start from where you ain't. And he started with a vision. And that makes him a real artist. He didn't make a drawing about the vision. He drew his vision. And that's the point of Will James. His line is alive. I must talk in the present tense when I describe Will James. He had some drawings that were better and some drawings that were worse. And actually, he did. Sometimes when he was with it and sometimes when he uh, spilled his loop. Of course. But generally speaking, when he was on, he was right on. And he made what are, for me, timeless drawings. Now, here's a great French draftsman, uh, Eugène Delacroix, Delacroix. And there is a use of immediate, there is immediacy of line, these two figures, studies for paintings. Uh, there are also drawings that Will James could possibly have done. The immediacy is absolutely the same. I want to show you another man who was a contemporary of um, Delacroix, and, uh, and that's Jericho. And here are two horses by Jericho. Again, the same sort of right now, right now. And when it's done right now, it enters into a timeless point. And that's what Will James's work does. That's what... Uh, makes it validly great drawing. Everybody will say a Remington of Russia, but very few know about real things. They sure don't. You know, uh, oh, you know, it's funny. I've spent my life, uh, ever since I was a kid, around real working cowboys. I admire them. They give me so much. Uh, those men who are still very much my friends and my uh, inspirers, encouragers, um, they prefer Will James to any other living or dead Western artist, cowboy artist. Remington and Russell, they love him. They love Russell. They love Remington. But generally, the working cowboy, the working cowboy, prefers Will James. Excuse me. Will James, that line is so damned alive. It's so immediate. And with all due respect to Russell and Remington, men I've admired ever since I was a child, as long as I've admired Will James, they simply do not have that kind of command. 
they don't have it. They're magnificent draftsmen, superb draftsmen, but they do not have that highest level of mastery, of genius. They've never achieved that. And James does it time after time after time. Do you want to comment about... Um, I thought, okay, well... I don't yeah, know. Okay. But do you want to comment on his drinking and his, um, what he might have been had he not <sighs> died at the age of 49 or 50? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I try not to look back very much. Uh, don't figure out woulda, shoulda, and coulda. I don't believe in woulda, shoulda, and coulda, and I don't believe in if. And um, the old saying about a if, you know, what a bullfrog would do is if. And, uh, or if wishes were horses, beggars would ride, that sort of thing. I don't believe in that. But make a short little exception and say about the tragedy of Will James is drinking himself to death in just the beginning of his middle years, his ripest years. I think there was a great bitterness that Will James sensed and felt at being unappreciated for his greatest achievement, and that is being one of the greatest draftsmen that ever, ever put a line onto a page. He simply was not seen, he was not validated, and that is true to this day. I would think that that could have something to do with his drinking himself to death. But that's again, woulda, shoulda, and coulda. He's left us an incredible heritage of drawings that, in my book anyway, are, are um, they're just not equaled by anybody I know. Rodin, uh, um, Auguste Rodin, the French sculptor, uh, in his later years did some unbelievably, I'm sure everybody knows those works, uh, drawing studies of, of nude dancers and semi-draped dancers. And those have that immediacy of line, that complete at once grasp of the mass, the volume, and the gesture. There's this whole American school of abstract expressionism, of which I was a very proud part uh, in the late 40s and early 50s. Uh, and they've called that work, they call it gestural painting, they call it action painting. And Will James was an action draftsman, as fine an action draftsman as, as ever there was. I'm so tired, I guess, of using superlatives one after the other, but it's fitting in the case of Will James. I just want to bow my head in the direction of Will James. If I had my hat on, which I usually do, I'd take it off in the direction of Will James. Great master. Great master.